Good Monday morning, everybody. This is Grace, and I am sitting here today, and I have been sitting in front of my computer thinking about something that's really been on my mind a lot lately, and that's people. Um, how you, how, in a way, feel like after having survived uh, narcissistic abuse, you might reach a point in your life, and it could be early on in your recovery, your healing, or later on, when you feel like you deserve a reward for this, you know? You've, you've accomplished something in life that's very tough. And that's to survive this. To survive somebody gaslighting you. To survive somebody turning your world upside down. Um, ma manipulating you in so many ways. The, everything, the, the gaslighting, the you know, making you insignificant. Or making trying to make you feel insignificant. That they're the most important person. They're the most important thing on the planet. Um, you are replaceable. You are insignificant. You know, just all of this, that you have survived it and you feel, you know, I came out of it. And you feel in a way special, even though you know other people have experienced something similar, but you are unique. Your situation is unique and you know it. But other people have experienced something like it. <clears throat> Thinking about that, and then thinking about the people um, who are also victims, when you come down to it, the people are also victims, who believe that <clears throat> they're in some way, they've never experienced this before. They've never run across a narcissistic type person. They've never run any, across anybody who's toxic. And they believe it. They truly believe it, but the thing about it is they've been manipulated. <clears throat> they too have been, been manipulated, because you can go out and I, I know this myself, that no matter how much I have recovered, I'm going to run across another narcissist in my life. Just I can do that just going out and driving in rush hour of traffic. But some people believe they've never, ever faced this. Like I said, they're victims too. Okay, They have seen this. They just don't see it. And they're in that part of it that they just don't see it. And while thinking about all these things, so much more on top of it, um, I realized... I'm feeling anxiety is what I'm feeling because I'm about to go in about say an hour I'm going to somewhere where I have seen this kind of people <clears throat> these this kind of yeah I have seen these these types and and it's unbelievable it, and there's the group narcissism the collective narcissism too and it's making me feel a little bit of anxiety so, in a way, I feel like this is good that I, you know, am speaking out about it. Okay, to go back a little bit, um, yesterday, I told Adam, you know, he's known that I have to go to this place today. And uh, I told him last night that I was feeling a sense of dread. And I really was feeling a sense of dread. I just dread going there because I know um, how they operate, how they are. Uh, they, you know, I don't know all of them, but my experience so far has been that. Of there's a collective narcissism, a uh, really it's a lack of professionalism, and uh, not on everybody's part, like I said. But it fills me with a sense of dread. Now, the, oh, the last time I ever really felt a sense of dread, okay, to to an, you know to this level, um, I don't usually feel dread, okay, at all. I'm not even sure how the word is truthfully uh, defined, but dread is the feeling that I'm feeling. <clears throat> the word I'm using for it. So the last time was when I was taking a class. Okay, and it was a, I had to go to it once every week, and um, it was an eight-hour a day class. I had to do it for I think 16 weeks. Well, after I'd say I don't know, maybe it was just the first one. I can't really remember. Every time that I'd have to go to this class, I felt a sense of dread. I dreaded going there. It was just, it it was like. A situational depression <clears throat> and the reason was because the uh, the people the other students in the class uh, not all of them of course if I saw everybody this way yeah that, that would be a problem with me but the many of the people in the class they, they had a um, an anger a jealous you know a type of anger jealousy in the <clears throat> you know they just had this uh, toward one another and it was like a, a separation of types I mean a separation of it was really about education 
know, at what level of education they had, and they, they separated themselves out. Um, but actually, it was one section that separated them from the other, themselves from the other. And it was, you know, like walking into just a battle zone, you know, uh, uh, people wanting to be so angry and uh, call it narcissistic, really, because they wanted to be the center of attention, but they knew somebody else had that attention uh, because of this, this education thing. But they wanted to down that person, the other people. You know, they, they said, you're insignificant. The whole thing, turning the world upside down. Um, it was unbelievable. I, I really felt like I'm sitting there and just watching back and forth, back and forth. You know, and the other side, they were more like either just ignoring it or just being themselves, I guess. I, it's, it's really difficult to say how exactly. Okay, and there was this one situation where I really felt it, I mean, to the max to the strongest degree and that was there was a woman in the class and she was older than, than I was at the time even and all of us she was the oldest woman there except for the instructor but um she was a, a big strong woman and um, she had the most anger the most anger and she decided that she was going to bully really um, another woman in the class and this woman, this other woman, she reminded me of Reba, the Reba McIntyre on that show Reba. And I can tell you at the moment, I felt like I was going to have to be her Barbara Jean. I've been actually hinted that I'm a little bit like Barbara Jean. <clears throat> but yeah, because this woman was, her, her anger in which was really at herself, her anger was so um, strong that she, I was afraid she was going to attack her, to attack the Reba-like person. And uh, it, it was amazing. I mean, you're in a classroom, and, and the bad thing is the classroom was for a field of, uh, that I tried to switch to, and you would think it would be filled with people who are loving and caring types. That ha was not my experience from the time I started taking classes. It was not. It was more of people with an attitude a narcissistic type of attitude. They, they are everything. They are the center of the world, the universe. <clears throat> Everybody else is wrong. They're right. You know, other people are insignificant. And um, if you try to be anything better than I, I'm going to uh, really just do you in type because they had to be you know, each one center of attention. So like I said, it was, it was filled with dread. It was just filled with dread. Of going to there and sitting there and seeing such <clears throat> and to know that the people that they're they're studying to uh, help are elderly people okay people that I, I mean I don't even like the word elderly myself but they can't they need assisted assistance in living assisted living homes and there they these people are they're the center of attention you know the people who are training to help these elderly people, but they have a sense of themselves so narcissistic that uh, nobody else is, is, is important and they're all that's important. And these are the people who are going into this field. You know, really, that's what got to me. Really, that's what, you know, the bottom line was. Is And guess what? Every place that I went to, I saw that. And it's sad. You know, we're all going to get old one day if we live long enough. We might wind up in one of those homes. And this is what you're going to see. Yeah. Okay, I, I I deleted a clip that basically I started off by saying that I've always thought that it was a bad argument kind of thing to say that you know, to try to make people feel empathy. And saying that of, uh, you know, that you're going to be one day old yourself. And you hear that a lot in this field. I, I can tell you that. I've heard a lot of it in this field. <clears throat> but they use that to try to get people to feel empathy. It's such a shame these days that we uh, feel a need to basically shame, guilt somebody to feel empathy. Empathy should be there. You know, it's like when people say you have to earn respect. No, that's that's a narcissistic um, abuse kind of thing to say you have to earn respect. No, respect should be there. <clears throat> anyway, I deleted that part of the clip because of something else I said, but. Um, basically, I, I listened to the other ones, and of course, you know, the people that 
<clears throat> I was speaking about that um, did this thing of um, being so narcissistic, you know, the world revolved around them, was not everybody in the class. I need to point that out. But the ones that did stuck out so far. Um, it was sad. And like I said, I've been to plenty of these places, and I've even done internships and worked um, as an employee and as a director's position. And I will tell you that what I have seen, what I have really seen, is that that hope, there's the group narcissism, the collective narcissism, um, and, and individuals. I mean, I could, you can walk into some of these. I've, I've just walked into some of them and saw the management staff standing around at front, and it's like they're, they're fluffing their hair, and they don't even see you come in because they're, oh, they're so busy talking to one another and chit-chatting. and You know, these are people who are supposed to be there for the residents. Okay, and from the front line, from walking in the door, it's the first thing you see is that it's all about them. You know, and some people might think that I'm highly sensitive, which is not a bad thing, you know. But yeah, when you see it, you walk in, and that's what you that's your impression. Um, not a good thing. But what kind of people go into this? By the way, that's grumbling Gus is not happy this morning. But <clears throat> my dog. But yeah, um, and, and today I'm going to walk into another kind of um, situation where I see this. You know, people who are supposed to be there for people, for others, but it's all about them. And I'm afraid our world, you know, we, we've said this, how, how many years, this, many years, people have been saying we live in a narcissistic world. The truth of it is, we do. So, if you really think you haven't run across these people, and these are the same people who often say to somebody, uh, who's in a bad relationship, say a marriage, and they say, why don't, you know, him or her, why don't you leave them? It's because they, you know, they're still, we can't blame them. They've been manipulated. They haven't been able to see it yet. But don't say that to somebody. You know, just don't. You know, you, you don't know what you're saying. So, okay. Now, of course I know that we're human. We make mistakes. And when those of us who have experienced it, we um, we might still say it because we really can feel that empathy. We really have experienced it and we're well aware of it. Um, we are not seeing that person as though they have the problem, however, you know. And, uh, and people who have not seen it, they, they might think, well, you're the problem because you're not leaving this person. But those of us who have experienced it know our feeling is more of, I just wish you could get out of it. I just wish you could leave it. Because I'm feeling what I, I would think that you would feel. You know, this is empathy. And I know how bad it can get. I know it can get worse. I know it, will es it might escalate. And often it does. In everything I've ever experienced. So we're, we're not saying it and blaming you. We're not blaming you at all. We're just knowing the situation. But, and that's something else, I guess. In a way, we need to check ourselves. But at the same time, if nobody did say to us, I understand what you're going through, and I really wish you could get out of it. I really wish you could leave. You know, we might feel like nobody's caring. You see? It's just such a, a dual-way sword, you know. You, you, you feel compelled. That's compassion. That is compassion. When you feel the urge to help relieve somebody's suffering there you know just to that's compassion and that's what we feel not everybody feels that a lot of these people that will say leave this person that they feel their sense of their own sense of superiority in a way that they haven't had that never run across a person like that before in their lives and if they did they would do this well they're in a little bit of a denial you know this is my opinion anyway you know this you know how it goes to so read the description and uh Read the disclaimer in the description box below this video on YouTube, and I'm not a healthcare professional or provider, and this is just my opinion, so don't take it as advice, counseling, or anything like that. But anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. This was enough for today. Bye.